Hello and welcome to this third installment of the TDE Academy. We will be talking about remote cloning and upgrading encrypted PDBs. And after a short PowerPoint presentation, I will go through a live demo where I upgrade a 12102 PDB to a 1970 PDB. Hello, my name is Peter Wall. I'm the Principal Product Manager for Encryption and Key Management in Oracle Server Technologies in the database security team. This is our safe harbor statement. Please read it to make sure that you don't make any purchasing decisions based on what you hear and learn today. So the workshop, the first part is I will define the goal of this workshop and give a few updates about TDE, including extra patches that are needed to make this work. Part two, three, four, and five are the live demo already then we will go through the TDE setup of the source database and prepare that for cloning. We will review the TDE setup of the destination database and prepare that for cloning. Then we will be cloning a PDB from a 12102 container to a 197 container. And then we upgrade the 12102 PDB to a 197 PDB, always keeping um, <coughs> uh, the encrypted table spaces and the, uh, the encryption master keys in close view. So the goal of this workshop is to enable DBAs to, su to successfully complete upcoming upgrade projects with encrypted databases. The Oracle database 12102 will run out of support in July 2022. Oracle database 19c however is the current long-term release and will be with us until March 2026. The correct steps in the correct sequence can make a big difference between success and failure because in TDE we have only very few let me try this again attempts. Uh, this workshop uses two, two node rack databases with their shared auto open wallet in ASM. The TDE setup of the destination database is based on new static and dynamic system parameters while the source database 12102 still uses the traditional TDE setup. Now here is a quick table on how the traditional controls and the new controls for TDE compare. On the left side, the first example indicates that we have a wallet-based TDE setup because it says uh, method equals file and then the directory points to a directory. If we translate this to the new settings in 18C and 19C, we have wallet root that takes over the directory and TDE configuration which replaces the method. So if the second example is we have a password protected connection into OKV, in this case we have a wallet root and the TDE configuration says TDE um, key store configuration equal OKV. Now the third example is an auto open OKV where we have method equals OKV and then the directory which contains the wallet which contains the OKV password and we do this with wallet root and TDE configuration equals OKV pipe file. This is the same setting that you use when you migrate from a wallet into OKV and when you would like to keep an auto open wallet afterwards you would leave it that way. Now the TDE wallet goes into whatever you define as wallet root slash TDE um, on the left side, we see that in order to find the OKV client installation, the database followed a symbolic link that was automatically created by the OKV client installer. And that symbolic link is put into Oracle base slash OKV dollar <coughs> um, Oracle SID. And the OKV client .ora is a soft link that points into the installation directory. That is how the database found the OKV client. Now with wallet root, you install the OKV client into slash OKV and the database will find it itself. The Oracle database 12201 introduced the static system parameter external key store credential location, which can point to any directory to store an extra auto open wallet, which allows us to replace the key store password in the secret plus command line with external store. Um, if you put that auto open wallet into whatever you define as wallet root slash TDE underscore SCPS, the database will find that wallet by itself. So 
By introducing bullet root, we basically eliminated the need for environment variables in this TDE setup. And I think this is a big plus. What about patches? On the source database, which is 12102 patched to the January 2020 PSU, patch 3039 allows to change the default, the database default encryption algorithm from AES128 to AES192 and AES256. Um, it's important for the uh, parameter encrypt new table spaces because in encrypt new table spaces, even if you don't specify an encryption, the uh, the encryption syntax to your create um, uh, table space command, the table space will be encrypted. There is no option, however, to define the encryption algorithm because we will use the database default key or the database default algorithm. And so if you change that to AES-256, then your new table spaces will be encrypted with AES-256. Patch 30, 70, 80, 64 is very important because it is a backport of the force key store option from Oracle Database 12.2. From a user perspective, that allows you to operate on auto open key stores. By nature, Oracle 12.1 treats an auto open wallet like a, like a read only container which makes it very unflexible. And with that force key store option, we can operate on those auto open key stores again. And that really helps uh, specifically when you deal with PDBs. Then patch 183 is needed to, to allow uh, to copy PDBs across servers. On the destination database, I also installed patch 30, 39, 80, 99, which allows us to change the default encryption algorithm. And then patch 29, 46, 95, 63 is mandatory to enable PDB cloning via database links. In Oracle database 18 and 19, there is a system parameter called one step plugging for PDB with TDE. This parameter when changed to true only allows to clone PDBs via database links without providing or knowing the password of the destination wallet. That helps with um, separation of duty. But we this has been superseded by replacing the wallet password with the string external store with it, which is applicable to many more TDE commands. So basically all TDE commands that do not change the TDE configuration can use external store instead of the key store password. It could be the wallet password for a wallet-based TDE setup, or it could be the could be the OKV password for an OKV-based TDE setup. So this basically allows us that the DBA doesn't know the OKV password, doesn't know the wallet password, and hence cannot make any changes to the TDE setup. Again, this helps with um, separation of duties. What do we need to do on the source database? So this is a 12.1 database. There is a little bit of more work necessary than in 12.2 and later source databases. The same thing is that we need to create a user on the source database with proper, privile proper privileges to allow cloning. Then we need to remove Apex from the 12.102 root container. Right? We know that nothing should be installed in the root container, but when we came up with pluggable databases, we thought that putting Apex into the root container would be a good idea. However, the 19.7 database does not have Apex installed in the root container, and the installed options, when you do PDB cloning, the installed options need to be equal. So since we cannot install Apex into the 19.7 root container, we have to remove it from the 12.1 root container. Then we restart the PDB read only. We cannot PDB clone a PDB that is open read write because for this we need local undo table spaces. 12.1 doesn't have that. So the PDB needs to be open read only. And after that, we can export the PDB keys to an encrypted file, right? We copy the keys out of the wallet into an encrypted file. On the on the target database, we create a database link that points to the source database and logs into the users that we created in step one. Then we clone the PDB. 
because it's a 12.1 PDB, the PDB keys are not copied automatically into the wallet of the receiving database. Then after cloning, we upgrade the PDB so that it's a 19.7. We import the PDB keys from the encrypted file into the wallet of the receiving database. And then we need to temporarily turn off encrypt new table spaces because the upgraded PDB, which is now a 19.7 PDB, will automatically create local undo table spaces. Now that's the case for encrypt new table spaces and the PDB will try to encrypt them. Uh, we don't need undo and temp table spaces to be encrypted because the database automatically tracks where encrypted data comes from and as soon as, it's, as it spills over into temp or undo table spaces, the data, this data will be encrypted with the database key. So there is no need to encrypt temp or undo table spaces. And that is why we turn this off while the database creates the local undo table spaces. And right after that, we can return it back on. And then we rekey the upgraded PDB so that it's using its own key and no longer the same key that we use from the source database. So let's go to the live demo. So here we are looking at our 12.102 database. And this is just a list of the patches. Here we make sure that we have the environment variables stored in server control. This is our signal.ora pointing to file and the location for the TDE wallet. And now we have to remove Apex from the container database. We create a user, which allows cloning, and we open the PDB in read only. Now we export the keys that belong to the PDB to an encrypted file and we copy that file over to the 19C container. Okay, now we go to the 19C container and look at the patches first. Okay. Here's our TDE parameter pointing to a file and wallet root points to a directory. Now, if you look into this directory, we only see two directories. The directory uh, wallet root slash TDE contains the TDE wallet and wallet root slash TDE SCPS contains the auto open wallet, which allows us to replace the key store password with external store. Here is an inventory, so we see that we already have a PDB. We create a database link, look at the key store, which only contains two keys for the root container and the pluggable database. We cannot use the key store class because in 12.1 we cannot copy the keys over, so we cannot use the key store class. As we can see, the keys have not been copied over. And now we open the PDB in upgrade mode. and upgrade the PDB to 19.7. Now that the upgrade has been completed, we I added the, uh, the alert log windows because it's interesting what's happening. So when we try to start the new PDB, then you see that it asks for the missing key and also the creation of the local undo table spaces fails. Okay, so now we import the keys into the wallet. We see a message that the keys have been imported and that the pluggable database can be opened now. 
but we need to turn off encrypt new table spaces first so that the new local undo table spaces are not encrypted. So set this to DDL, which means that we only encrypt when you include the encryption clause into the statement. We close the PDB, we open it, and now everything is good. We can see that it doesn't complain about missing keys. It successfully creates the local undo table spaces and everything is good. Now we turn encrypt new table spaces back on. Now we do a rekey operation so that the new clone finally is using its own key and no longer the key of the source database. Now we recompile the pluggable database and we can remove the alert logs. Okay, database has been upgraded. Now we can encrypt sysaugs and system table spaces. Oops, typo. Select from our demo table, everything is good, which is an encrypted table space. Let's do an inventory. Oh, there are still some table spaces that are encrypted with AS128. Let's change this. Okay, let's rekey them to AS256. Do the same thing for protected. Okay, perfect. We just upgraded a 12.1 database to a 12.1 pluggable database to 19C. I hope you enjoyed it and it answered your questions. Um, thank you very much for your time. I would be glad to accept your invitations on LinkedIn or if you follow me on blogs.oracle.com where I every now and then post about Oracle Key Vault or transparent data encryption. Thank you so much. Bye bye.